Hey everybody, welcome back to Three Generations Restoration. Behind me we got a McCormick Deering 1530. The serial number is TG127632M. Uh, today we are going to be attempting to unstick the main clutch on this tractor. Currently the uh, main clutch is stuck and I can demonstrate to you that it's stuck right now. Well, I'd have to get up on the tractor, but what we were doing is we, I would push the clutch in and have someone turn the engine over and the tractor would still move. So what we already did, we got our loader and we pulled this thing around our little gravel area and I was popping the clutch and no avail there. So what we tried first was we tried popping this little intermediate cover right here uh five bolts and we soaked the actual uh clutch down there we'll show you guys real quick what's down in here so you can kind of see there's the actual pinion gear for the belt pulley but down in here is the actual pressure plate and clutch we were turning the engine over kind of soaking what we could at this axis but our big problem is we can't really get a pry bar down in there real well so what today what we are going to do today is we are going to take this actual belt pulley assembly off that'll give us a lot more access to the clutch and pressure plate assembly but to do that we got a lot of other stuff to take off we got the huge steel air cleaner assembly here that's got to come off this is gonna this i'll be i'll bet this weighs probably 150 pounds the tank's got to come off and a few other odds and ends you got to take the hood off um but yeah let's go ahead and get started let's get this uh clutch hopefully unstuck today So we're taking the main hood off. Ready? Yeah. We've already had a lot of this stuff off. Just we have it sitting on here again because this valve cover doesn't have a whole lot on it right now. As in the bolts are missing and the little valves for the fuel line or the, the fuel inlet are missing. So I'll set this aside. Next up, the air breather. All right, to get this little air breather assembly off, we got three bolts here that tie into the carburetor's inlet. We got a little uh, angle iron here that stabilizes the muffler. And we got two bolts in there, three quarters that hold the actual assembly on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and probably start with this triangle and we're gonna get those bolts off first. Okay, so I got a 9 16 wrench and socket. We'll hopefully be able to get these off. Yep. This will just make it easier getting getting everything off and out of the way and
There's one. And I already see this little angle or inlet separating a little bit, which is good. That's what we want to see. All right, here comes the last bolt. This one looks like it's going to be kind of difficult to even get to. I'm taking the air the air breather off. There we go. Now we're on it good. So now that I'm looking at this thing too. So there's the there's the last bolt for the triangle part. Um I'm gonna get this angle iron out of the way now as well. Alright, so now what we're doing is we're gonna take off the actual air cleaner. There's two bolts in here, and I can there's the one. Kind of a hard place to get to, but it came off. A little bit of gravel on it. All right, now, now this is gonna have to be held because this is the last bolt here. You got it, you think? All right. You ready? Yep. It's got to pop out of this rubber right here. Oh, I need a. Can you hold it here a second? Yep. I got to get a screwdriver. Holding on tight right now. I said that before, this is the inlet. Of course, it keeps slipping by. Okay, it should come off now. Here it goes. I got it too. Alright, I got it. You got it? Here it is, a big old chunk of iron. This thing here is probably worth $500, someone would pay. It's in pretty good shape. We'll set this aside. Alright, so we got that air breather off. We got to get the tank off. Three clamps. I think I've had these, yeah, these should be 9 sixteenths. Um, I'll probably get a little PB blaster on them, get them soaked. Um, all I think we need to do is get them loose on one side and we'll flip them over. And we should be uh, pretty good to get this tank off here. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. So here's something a little interesting. I thought this tank was one, but it's actually two separate tanks. I'm assuming this is your, back in the day, this would have been the gas tank and back in the day this would have been your kerosene or fuel tank um, so I got all the clamps out of the way at least I hope I do and you want to get this one out of there yep. so I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, rubbers kind of off here Just these on the table so let's go ahead I'm gonna take the uh, I got to disconnect this fuel line real quick all right so I got this little fuel line here I got to take off it should be 5 ace there it goes so get this out of the way this sediment bowl the top is good but you can kind of tell that this bottom bracket here is junk all right I'm gonna get a step stool real quick all right here comes the main tank 
Put it on its side. I want to see the bowl. Oh yeah. Plugged. Looks like this tank's gonna need a little patching. Yeah, I don't know what this is. It's some sort of a fluid. Probably a little bad gas. Um, let's go ahead and get the starting tank out of the way. Set this on its side too. Look at that, guys. <laughs> Completely rusted through. No. Think we can patch it? A little JB Weld? Oh, yeah. Hey, look at this, Grandpa. What do you think? What do you think? Jump. <laughs> All right, so you just saw us take the tank off. I'm going to get the fuel line out of the way, but first I'm going to get the choke out of the way. There wasn't even a cotter key on it, so we'll just slide this back and out of the way. Looks like that is as far as it's going to go. It should be good enough. Um, unless you could give it a pull. Yeah, there you go. All right, we're fully choked right there. We're 100% choked. Um, Get this fuel line out of the way here. Another five ace. I got one of them Chinese wrenches, so bear with me. There we go. Drop forged steel. You can kind of see this is like one of your fuel entrances here. You got a, by the looks of it, you got a bowl at the bottom and a bowl at the top. This one doesn't have anything hooked up to it. And I really like this T. Look, I mean, look at the feature of this little fuel line here. It goes up to the intake. I don't know what it's for. Uh, this is like the first 1530 I've ever worked on, so. All right, looks like we got a lot of this stuff out of the way. Um, I think what we're gonna probably do is we're gonna have to leave this on, this throttle on, or the mag, and let's take a look at it on the other side. Yeah, we're gonna have to leave this on. I think that'd be pretty hard to... Yeah. So what we'll do now is we're gonna take the pulley off. We're gonna... I'm gonna get some pliers. We're gonna knock that uh, little pin out of there and then get a big socket and hopefully rattle that free. And then this should slide right off. And then we got a tool here today, a mini excavator, and we're gonna hopefully strap this thing up and pop it out and get it out of the way. So go ahead and get this off. All right, so we got a two inch socket on the nut for the pulley. These usually aren't too tight, so there it is. Of course, it's stuck in the socket, but this nut here is pretty hard to find too, I bet, nowadays. Yeah, I'm gonna have to hit it out with a punch. Hang it down. There we go. All right, so there's the nut for the pulley. The pulley should come right off. There we go. He's the other threads. All right, there's the old belt pulley. Set it on the ground. And I'll probably just put the nut back on here to protect the threads. And I think now all it is is a couple bolts, two here, two on the other side, and this whole casting here should come right up. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Which way do we think? I think it should come this way. Me too, because there's more I stuff on this side. You're gonna, you're gonna come on this. I can pick this side up. So what we need, what we have to do though, is we have to pick up. We have to cock it a little bit because Why? it's hitting on that one here and there. 
Let's just do a, is it running? The thing running? Yes. There we go. Just like that. I'll get it close and then I'm going to set it down. And then I'll come over on your side. Okay. A lot of oil coming out. So it is, it is what it Tell is. Tell me when you're ready. Ready? ready. Here we go. Okay. Are we, gonna, we need to set it on cardboard or something? Uh, let's just get that cardboard. It's laying on the shop floor. There it is. There's the clutch. We get a shovel and cover this up. Now we can see what we're doing. Looks like a nest is built in there. Probably mice one in there. Mouse nest? Yeah. Yeah. That can mouse piss will do it. Move it. All right, so here's the clutch. Um, you can kind of see that it is currently stuck. Um, but down in there, there's a big mouse nest. And if you guys can kind of see down in there, it's probably halfway full of the clutch housing. So I know mouse piss doesn't exactly do good things for clutches. So I'm, I have a good feeling that that's probably what happened. Um, so we're gonna try to work this thing free now and hopefully get it free. I know the spline is supposed to be freed up too. Well, I'm gonna spray a lot of PB Blaster down here and hopefully get it freed up today. Here's what we're digging out of the clutch housing. Nice. We got ourselves a three-story rat mansion that we're cleaning out right now. We'll probably get most of the big chunks and we're gonna vacuum the rest and get this nice and clean. But this does not do a good service on a clutch, guys. This is our whole problem. We got the, uh, we got the clutch freed up, but we're having a problem where we don't think that the throw up bearing is completely pushing the pressure plate down and disengaging the clutch so we're good i think in here but what we need to do is adjust this turnbuckle down here make it longer so the clutch engages more evenly just we're not getting enough engagement so we're gonna go ahead and try that now so we'll give it a shot okay, so we are successful right now with unsticking the clutch and fixing the threaded rod so what we did was i didn't show it but we took the cotter keys off here and back there. We took this rod in the shop and we heated the turnbuckle off of here and loosened this nut and we shortened the rod. And now you wanna push the clutch in. Look at our fingers. Look at how much they're engaging compared to before. And the plates. Um, and you can see right in there, I don't know if you can see it, but we're getting a good eighth inch clearance between the pressure plate and the actual clutch discs right there um but hold on so before if you can see on the spline you could see that little i would say the start of the machine marks that's about as far as the throw out bearing would contact the fingers now push the clutch in again we're getting extremely far on the shaft and now want to turn the engine over grandpa it's in gear. No. Yeah, it is. You're in it gear. Is? Yep. Let's see. Okay. So we're in gear, and he's cranking it over. And when we're the tractor, give it a little more. The tractor is not moving. So we are we are good to go. You're good. You can stop. We're good to go on uh, the clutch, which is good. This is kind of one of the biggest biggest problems with the tractor outside of it not running so we're going to kind of do reverse order of disassembly we're going to clean up our little housing for the belt pulley drive pinion and we're going to clean up the gasket surface and we're going to put some gunk down and it should be good to go um we got to reshim the pinion gear for the belt pulley i have all the shims there um and then tanks go back on and air filters go back on and 
then we can try to see if we can't start it so let's give it a shot all right so in the reverse order of what you guys saw we put the belt pulley drive back on uh we kind of put it here slid it off kind of like how we took it off just reverse we kind of cleaned up the gasket and put some permatex on and made sure that the pinion had the same shims here so the preload was the same tightened all the bolts back up um what we're gonna try now is we're going to see if we got any spark we kind of got a little bit of a mess we're going to clean up first but we do want to see if we're getting spark out of the mag if not we're going to have to file the points out and i think what we're going to try is just putting a little gas down each of these fuel inlets and giving it a shot that way so we'll see what happens here but the main thing of the clutch is good and now we can move on to trying to get it running so that's what we're going to try right now all right, so we took the mag apart, cleaned up the points. Two screws here, pops the cap off. There's a rotor behind here, pull the rotor off. Four screws here for this cap, pull the cap off. So this is pretty similar to the F, I think it's the Fairbanks and Morse J4B3 Alice Chalmers mag. The only difference between this one is the gear isn't actually on the, on the cap. The gears are both built into the mag. So there's no timing involved. Uh, we cleaned up the points and spun it over and we do have spark. I gotta spin it three clicks and then we should be getting a uh, spark. One, two, three. Yep. So we got spark. Well, the only thing we can do is just put a little gas in our little fuel ports and See if she won't fire up, maybe. That one's primed. They're open, so they just flood right in. This one ain't open. What is going on here? This one's slowly going in. I don't know what's going on here. This is clean. Yeah. A little bit of dirt, whatever. Let's see if I can. S there we go. Will this old beast return from the dead? All right, remember to stay safe with your hand cranking always keep your thumb away from the crank rod of gear Let's see what she's got Hell yeah, we got it to fire up already. Look at that. All right, everybody. So I think we're going to call it an episode on the 1530. We got a lot done today. Spent about seven, seven to eight hours on this today. So I think it's about time to go home. But we did hear it fire. And that's a real good sign, guys. So tractor fired, clutch is unstuck. Going to be a good looking tractor. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more.